Hi, my name is Barbara Wainwright. I am the founder of Wainwright Global Institute of Professional Coaching, and I am here with Dawn Peters. Welcome, Dawn. Thank you, Barbara. All right. <laughs> Welcome to you, too. Thank you. I was wondering, Dawn, what made you decide to become a certified professional coach? Well, about five years ago, I had an interaction with a uh, a young uh, single mom, uh, she was a teenager, and uh, she had a one-year-old daughter at that time. And um, she showed up at my house, my home office, and was just very distraught. So um, she talked to me, and I listened, listened to her, and I, felt, I found myself offering... Um, a lot of support to her. And um, while initially she was so distraught that um, I was kind of concerned. So while within the conversation, she calmed down somehow. And um, she really started paying a little bit more attention um, to what she was saying and she started really finding that she's able to, um, you know, ex, uh, what should I say? She's able to uh, talk more freely about a situation. Mm -hmm. So after that, that conversation, um, within the next year, we, we, she was uh, making telephone calls to me um, on a weekly basis, just bouncing ideas off on me. I, I guess she felt comfortable with me. And she was just bouncing ideas off and I was um, um, giving feedback and, uh, and stuff like that. Anyway, at the end of the year, she, she successfully graduated from the program and uh, she made another visit to my home and she was really happy. And, um, you know, she said to me, thank you for being a great listener. And um, after that, I realized that, you know, I had the ability to empower others. Mm -hmm. And after that was the first encounter, then I started finding myself having more encounters with, um, with other people. And I received same feedback from them. And a lot of them said, oh, you'll be a great coach. <laughs> and I realized that, oh yeah, I, I think I have a gift of coaching. <laughs> so that's, that's where it all started. Yes. Oh, that's, that's excellent. So what would you say is your genre of coaching? What, what is it that you would call your genre? Well, my genre of coaching would be a self-management of hypertension coaching, a coach, and also a life purpose coach. Nice. Um, that's great. Should that's I go on? Or? Oh, sure. Yes. Okay. So my... Um, for the self-management of hypertension coach, coaching, that was a given. And that stemmed from my, my, the findings from my doctoral uh, program, my doctoral degree. Um, in the study, I focus on uh, uh, clients with, who are diagnosed with hypertension and didn't have the ability to take care of their um, their, to manage their blood pressure. So in the findings, it shows that um, most uh, people, including the people from the Caribbean and in North America, do not have their um, blood pressure under control. Um, the study also showed that despite the fact that they know, the people know um, what the disease is, as well as the things that they should do in order to take care of the disease, but they, they were lacking um, uh, self-confidence, they were lacking um, self-efficacy, and they were also lacking in motivation. So I, I just felt that, that this was a very great opportunity for me to really start um, empowering them to be able to wake up in the morning 
and, and say, you know what, these are the things that I need to do in order to take care of my, to manage my blood pressure. Um, in terms of the kind of activities that was, that is needed, um, looking at, okay, eating the right food. So dietary needs, um, ability to, um, to take their prescribed uh, medication and um, actually to monitor their to, uh, to monitor their blood pressure. Um, as well as some people, a lot of people use alternate medicine to treat uh, their hypertension. So having the understanding of that and having the ability to actually get up in the morning and, 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 and consciously start doing these things without, without anybody has to, to push them. So I feel that, that that's a need out there. And being a coach, a self-management of hypertension coach, I can start instilling in the population um, to actually to promote their ability in order to, to, um, to manage, to, to start um, in, including these activities in their daily, um, their daily lives in order to decrease their blood pressure. And a lot of times too, some, sometimes the, the, the amount of medication depends on how the, well they're doing with their, um, their, their blood pressure management. Um, they can actually start decreasing their medication. So that's the ultimate goal of a lot of, of patients that um, has been diagnosed with um, hypertension. Uh, secondly, in terms of the the junior, the life purpose coach, uh, junior, I it stems also from my my and uh, my enclosure, my 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 um, encounter with um, the Anna Louise, and from the feedback that I was getting as well from from other people, and I felt that. Even as an educator and as a nurse, I have encountered uh, many uh, young people who are actually um, spending years in school taking programs that just by, yeah, they get into a program, they take the program, they don't really understand why they're taking a program. So, and they'll probably end up dropping out or end up finishing the program and then move on to another program because they didn't like it. So a lot of times they, you find um, some students, like by the time they meet up with me, they'll be taking like, this is my third program. And it's like, they'll say, okay, I wasted so much time. And I think, I've, I, think I would like this, not really understanding whether they would like this or not, or whether that's another dead end. And uh, so that was an insight as well as I meet a lot of elderly, like older folks who said, you know, well, I'm doing this right now for my, make my living for the last so many years, but I still don't know what I want to do. I still don't know what I want to do in life. Right. So that, that give me, I, I felt like there was a sense of like loss and a sense of helplessness and a sense of hopelessness among the people that I am meeting that doesn't seem to know, doesn't seem to know what their, 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 their purpose in life is all about. And I felt that, I mean, I believe that I was in the same boat, you know, for many years of my life too. My lucky thing was that I actually was doing something that I love. So that was a clean break for me. Yeah. But for a lot of people who, I, I observe they definitely in, they were in the wrong, probably in the wrong field, the wrong career, the wrong you know um, profession. Yeah, and I feel like you know I could make a difference. You know, if if I could help um, coach them in order to find at an early early time in their life to help them to find that purpose in life early it would decrease a lot of um, stressors. It would decrease, it would promote a lot of life enjoyment. Yeah. And uh, so that, that's, that's where I end up, um, you know, going towards the genre of life, of life purpose coach. I love that. You're so right that if there's so many people in the world that are working in jobs that they don't love, that they're not passionate about, but they're 
they've trapped themselves by getting into so much debt that they don't have the opportunity to move from one career to another because the time that it takes to do that startup process, right? The, and so it's, it's really sad that that's really the state of the world and the state of a lot of people in the world. And I'm really glad that, that you know, you're out there helping people before they get locked into that career that doesn't serve them and just sit there for the rest of a long time before they go, you know what? I got to do something different because this isn't working for me. So I appreciate yeah. your genre and what you've done. That's really brilliant. Yeah. Uh, would you like to leave what, if anything, would you like to leave as a takeaway for our audience? What would you like them to take away from this conversation today? Well, from, from what I believe is that, you know, a lot of times we are going we feel that we are going in a direction where there is no enjoyment. There is no life satisfaction. And a lot of times I believe that your body is going to, into a place where your mind does not want to go. So you, you are aware of, of, of that. But it's just that you'll hear a lot of people say, I feel so lost. I feel so frustrated. I, I, I don't feel happy in what I'm doing. And a lot of times we just need to listen. We just need to listen to that, um, that still voice, that small still voice yes. within us and say, you know what? I probably need somebody, need to talk to somebody and, and see whether they can help me to get on that journey, that, that the right path. And a lot of times we don't realize that we say home is where the heart is, right? So, but what is home? I consider home as the right career or maybe the right um, place to live or the right, the right education. I, you know, like some people will say, okay, I feel right at home. Yes. And that word right at home talks volume to me. That just means to say that wherever your, you, your, your home is, your heart is. And if you don't feel that you are in that position or in that, in that place where you can say, truly, I feel at home, then there's something wrong. Another thing is that if you, if you know that you are... Um, you know, that maybe there might be somebody out there that can help you ease that burden, I would just advise you to find that person and um, get on the right career path, get in the right place in life, the right frame of mind, that you can end up making a difference in your life and also in the life of others. Mm. Wow, Don, that was so beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. I, I feel... 100% sure that that is the way to go. Home is where the heart is. And if you can say, I'm feeling at home, then you're on the right path. That makes so much sense to yes. me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dawn, for sharing. It's been a pleasure to interview you today. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much, Barbara. Thank you.